Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobacco. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star, Connie Haynes. And spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub who, when caught putting a red tail light on his Uncle Artie Stebbins' pajamas because he heard he walked in his sleep, calmly said, I'm a bad boy! Fireman brave and bold. I'm always on the alert. I put out the fires with my water pistol because I'm a little squirt. Uh, Costello, do you realize that we are working in a firehouse? What's the idea of walking in here late for work? Oh, well, Abbott, I couldn't help it. You remember the fire went to last night and you told me to take pictures of a burning building with my candid camera? Yes, yes. What about it? Well, when the fire truck went around the corner, I fell over backwards and I swallowed the candid camera. Well, why should that make you late? I had to sit up all night in a dark room and see what developed. I... <laughs> Look, Costello, there's, there's, there's going to be no nonsense around this firehouse. And for your information, I have just been appointed captain. Oh, you're the new captain. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I heard about it. You I did? brought you a present. There's a beautiful fire extinguisher, and it's guaranteed to last 200 years. A fire extinguisher mm-hmm. that lasts 200 years? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't expect to live that long. Well, you're going. You can take it with you. I... <laughs> Hiya, Captain. Never mind now. Well, there you go. What kind of a fireman are you? Do you realize this week is Save a Life Week? Oh, uh, sure. I know it's Save a Life Week. I did my share yesterday. Uh, who did you save? I had a date with two girls, and I saved one for tonight. <laughs> I thought so. You're in no condition to save anybody. Just look at your stomach. Well, what's the matter with my stomach? Oh, you want to diet. Why should I diet? I like the color it is now. I, I'm not talking about the color. Abbott, I am very proud of my stomach. Oh, you should be. Now, every day I lay out in the backyard and I let the sun shine on my stomach. What's the big idea? It always makes me feel good to see a nice pot roast. I... <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Just look at the size of you. Oh, what are you talking about? I only weigh 98 pounds. That... Ninety-eight pounds. Mm-hmm. Why, you dummy, you're sixty inches around the waist. Yeah, but I'm hollow. I... <laughs> Costello, I've had enough of this. If you're going to be a fireman, you're going to get busy and exercise right now. Oh, Abbott. Ma'am, come Please, on. Please, Abbott. No more exercise. Yes. I'm weak now. I don't care. Look at me, Abbott. I know. I'm so weak, I can't even stand up straight. Why are you leaning to one side? I parted my hair off center and it throws me off balance. <laughs> Talk sense, will you please? Did you do as I told you? Did you get out and play handball this morning? Oh, play hand... No! My hands were all blistered. Did you take your uh, ten-mile hike? No. no. My feet were all blistered. Uh, did you go uh, horseback riding? No. I couldn't find a saddle. <laughs> Look, will you quit your stalling, please? Now, you're going... You're going to do your exercises, nevertheless. Now, get in there and take your clothes off and get dressed for gym. Get dressed for gym? Gym who? Gym, gymnasium. Why should I get dressed for him? I don't even know the guy. No, no, you dummy. I want you to go in and uh, in the back room and work out. You want me to go in the back room and work out? Certainly. How am I going to work out if I'm in? What are you talking about? You can either stay out and work uh, out, or you can stay in and work out. Make up your mind. Am I in or out? Well, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. Some people don't like to work outside, inside because they get all in. Mm. So they go out and work out outside. Yeah. So they won't get all in from working out inside. Now, the guy has got me inside out. <laughs> oh, we forget it. Forget about this exercise. I guess the only way I can build you up is with vitamins. Vitamins? Yes. For instance, uh, B1. B1 what? Just, just B1. Just B1? Yes. Are you one? No. <laughs> said no. Then why should I be one? If it ain't good enough for you, it ain't good enough for me, Captain. Look, never mind that, Captain. Look, you idiot. I'm trying to tell you about something that's good for you. Be one. And I tell you, I don't want to be one. I wouldn't be one if I was the only one that could be 
one. <laughs> Look, I don't want you to be one. No? No. When I say be one, I don't mean be one. I mean be one. Ah, oh, when you say be one, you don't mean be one. You mean be one. That's right. Let me smell your breath. Ah, <laughs> Look, Costello, do you know anything about vitamins and calories? Oh, vitamins and calories. Sure, I know the both of those guys. Four vitamin and cab calories. No. I'm talking... <laughs> Look, I'm talking about vitamins that contain thiamine. Uh, contain what? Uh, you know thiamine. Thiamine? Yeah. Oh, I know Simon well. You do? Yeah, simple Simon. <laughs> Look, will you shut up? I'm trying to tell you what vitamins are. Vitamins are pills. Uh, they start with uh, A and they go to H. That's all right with me, brother. I, uh... <laughs> and you can still take your fire extinguisher with you. Now, never mind that. <laughs> Will you keep still and pay attention? Didn't you ever hear? Uh, <laughs> didn't you ever hear of the vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin? Yeah, and I take too many of those. Oh no, 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 no! You can't have too much of the sunshine vitamin. All I know is I've got the only stomach that rises in the east and sinks in the west. <laughs> I don't know why I waste my time with you. Here I am trying to build you up, trying to make a great fireman out of you that someday, someday people will build a statue of you and place it in the city park. They're not going to make any statue of me, Abbott. Why not? I think it would be terrible to be a statue and have the birds mistake me for a tree because if they built a nest in Lincoln's vest, just think what they'd do to me. <laughs> they'd lay eggs upon my chest and that would be awful, brother. When people walk by, they'd point at me and say... There's a woodpecker's mother. Thank you, Bud and Lou. And now, friends, let's go back about 25 centuries to a man named Egypt. Experience is the best teacher. Yes, experience is the best teacher. When cigarettes were very scarce not many months ago, most smokers took what they could get. One day, one brand, another day, some other brand. What did that experience teach? Well, let's ring in Egypt again. Actions speak louder than words. Yes, actions speak louder than words. And the actions of today's smokers speak louder than any words about any cigarette. Here are the facts. After more experience with different brands than ever before, more smokers are asking for camels than ever before. Yes, factory orders show that the preference for camels today is the greatest in all camel history. C-A-M-E-L-S Camels are the choice. <laughs> Will Osborne and the Camel Orchestra bring us a tune from Will's new picture, The Swing Parade of 1946. Oh, brother. water in your pump? Yes, I do. How do you keep your socks dry? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very funny joke, and I think I'll pull it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott, do you have water in your pumps? Uh, no, but I've got oil in my crankcase. Now, what am I going to do with these wet socks? <laughs> <laughs> there you go with that silly, silly talk. I'm through with you. Get your hat and coat and go home. Go ahead. Wait a minute, Abbott. Never mind. You can't fire me. I need this job. Every week I send my, my pay envelope home to my dear old mother. I, 
Oh, well, now, that's different. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that you sent your pay envelope home to your mother every, every week. week. Well, that's fine. At the end of the year, she has 52 envelopes, and I got all the money. That, <laughs> that does it. That does it. Get out. Oh, you and Abbott. I are all washed up. Go ahead. Abbott, no. Get out. Please, please. Please watch out where you're walking. Don't step on me. Oh, please, please don't step on me. Do you hear? Don't step on me or you will squash me. Who are you? Oh, just a little fire bug. Costello, <laughs> there's a young lady in the car outside. Let's see what she wants. Hello, boy. Oh, it's the famous actress, Bessie Maine Mucho. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely sunsuit you're wearing, Miss Mucho. Oh, do you like it? Oh, yeah. I made it out of a bondonna. Uh, a bondonna? Oh, Abbott, you know what a bondonna is. That's what a farmer wears hanging out of his paunch pocket. <laughs> Movie girls are wearing these handkerchief shorts. They're wonderful for sports and playing games. Oh, I like to play games. Last night I played a game called Puss in the Crooner. You mean Puss in the Corner? No, Puss in the Crooner. I got up and sang like a crooner and somebody hit me in the puss. <laughs> Look, I just stopped by to ask you if this was the right road to Hollywood. Yes, this is the right road to Hollywood. <laughs> I have to hurry. I'm playing on the baseball team. I'm the culture. Carcher? Yes, I think the most important one of the team is the carcher. Don't you? No, I'd say it was either the peacher or the shirt stoop. <laughs> well, I must be on my way. Au revoir. Trays beans. <laughs> That's French, you know. Hey, look out, Costello. Here comes your girlfriend leaning against her. Ah, there you are, you two-ton... Butch Jenkins? I'm glad you got it out. <laughs> I saw you flirting with that woman in that car. No, I wasn't, Lena. You're the only girl that ever turned my head. Yeah, I should have turned it further. I can still see your face. <laughs> Please, don't talk that way, Lena. Come, Lena. Come fly away with me to my little love nest. We will fly away together. Fly? With that fuselage, you couldn't even get off the runway. <laughs> I don't think every blonde I see is pretty. No, I don't, Lena. I don't think every blonde is pretty. Now, name one. Nelson Eddy. <laughs> Please, Lena, I'm crazy about you. Can't you see the two of us married? Yeah, I can see the man tying the knot. The preacher? No, the warden. I'd hang before I'd marry you. Goodbye. Hey, let's go. There's a three-alarm fire. Jump on the truck. Okay, Abbott. Get everybody off the street. Hey, Abbott. Tell that man to get out of the way. Get out of the way, huh? Oh, I can't walk on the public streets, huh? Oh, uh, it's Melonhead. Get a load of this guy, Costello. Me, one of the most respected citizens in Glendale. Look. What's the matter with Glendale? I didn't even mention Glendale. There's nothing wrong with Glendale. Go on back to Glendale. Oh, I should go back to Glendale. Get thrown in jail for vagrancy again, huh? <laughs> All right, then stay out of Glendale. Oh, I should stay away from Glendale. Want my wife to forget me, run away and marry that shoemaker from Azusa. Look, Melonhead, I don't want your wife to marry a shoemaker. <laughs> she should run around in her bare feet, huh? I don't want your wife to run around in her bare feet. Fine thing. You don't want people to notice that she's got nine toes on one foot. <laughs> nine toes? Your wife has nine toes on one foot? Go on, start a rumor. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Make me the laughing stock of Glendale. Now, look, Melhead, you're not going to give me any, any more arguments this week now. Now, just forget Glendale. Forget me, forget everything. Oh, I should lose my memory, huh? <laughs> Walk around in the days like a dope. People should call me an imbecile. Look, I wouldn't let people call you an imbecile. Oh, you got a patent on it, huh? <laughs> I'm an imbecile. I'm an imbecile. I'm an imbecile. Go on, brag. <laughs> Melonhead, I gotta go ahead to a fire. Will you get out of the way? Go on, push me around. Beat me. Fill me. Pull out your gun and pull me full of holes. Go no, on. I don't even carry a gun. Oh, sure. A gun is too noisy. Go on, pull a knife on me. Stab me. Cut me to ribbons. I'm ready to die. I don't want you to die, Melonhead. I hope you live to be 150 years old. Oh, you want me to be an old man 150 years old with a beard, huh? I should tip over my beard, fall in the street, get run over by a truck, and then you'll take me to a hospital. Look, I don't want to take you to a hospital. Oh, you want me to lay there in the gutter and bleed to death, huh? <laughs> Melonhead, I want you to be healthy so you can go to work. Same thing. An old man, 150 years old, wants me to go to work. All right, don't go to work. 
Oh, I shouldn't work. I should starve to death. Huh? <laughs> Will you wait a minute, please? Nobody wants you to starve to death. Eat steak. Big, juicy steak. How do you like that? I'm 150 years old, not a tooth in my head. He wants me to eat steak. <laughs> well, it will make you happy. I'll carry you around in my arms. Now he's trying to make an invalid out of me. You got me so mad now, melon head. I'm going to fight you. Yeah, I'll fight you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I'll fight you. Yeah. And I'll fight you. Oh, yeah. Well, we did that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one reason why I don't poke you right in the nose. And that's because I'm bigger than you. Yeah, well, it so happens that I'm bigger than you. Well, that's a better reason. For his first performance on the air, Camel's lovely Connie Haynes introduces Rip Van Winkle. Seven thousand three hundred days is a long, long time to sleep. But Rip Van Winkle slept for twenty long years. Then he woke one day. Rip, red hair had turned to gray. Rip Van Winkle hurried back into town, and to his dismay, Rip. liked it. It opened up his eyes and drip, rip, got hip, rip. Van Winkle's wrinkles faded away and he shed his beard, rip. The rage and tea reappeared. So if you want to swing and jive at the age of 95, start counting sheep. Sleep like Rip Van Winkle. He found to his surprise a thing called Swing with King, and he liked it. It opened up his eyes and drew. voice is as soothing and tasteful as the smoke of a camel cigarette, and just as difficult to describe. You can't describe music, Can. You have to experience it. Exactly. And you can't describe the smoke of camels, either. Each smoker must experience it for himself. Only his own T-Zone to tell him how soothing and tasteful a camel can be. The T-Zone. T for taste, T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Yes, the T-Zone. How the smoke on your tongue tastes, how the smoke in your throat feels, only your T-Zone can tell. And millions of smokers, forced by the cigarette shortage to try many brands of cigarettes, quickly discovered that only camels truly suited their T-Zones to a T. That's why today, after more experience with different cigarettes than ever before, more smokers prefer camels than ever before. Yes, for the most pleasant taste on smokers' tongues... For the most soothing smoke in smokers' throats, it's... C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels are the choice. Hey, hey, Costello. Mm-hmm. That alarm is still ringing. A- answer the phone. Hurry up. Hello, Costello Firehouse. I sent in a fire alarm five minutes ago. This is Mrs. Hugh you Who? Hugh you you mind yodeling that again and I'll join you in the chorus? Oh, you fool. Send the fire intro over to my house right away. Oh, why don't you 
you call us yesterday? We were in your neighborhood. <laughs> oh, you dummy. My house wasn't on fire yesterday. I know, but why wait until the last minute? <laughs> toy for Christmas. <laughs> you get that truck going. All right. We turn to this uh, next corner. And watch out for those people in the crosswalk. Okay. I'll stick on my hand. Oh! <laughs> I think I'll have to get my fingernails cut. <laughs> hey, Costello, look at the flames. We haven't got a minute to lose. <laughs> Come on. Get that ladder over there. Get that ladder over there. Okay, I'll open the ladder and read it. See what it says. Not ladder, ladder, ladder. Oh, ladder. What did you climb up on when you were a little boy? My mother's knee. Oh, no, no. no. Now climb up on yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, never mind. I don't want that. Listen, I want that big, that big long wooden ladder. Help me lift it up here. Now, go ahead. You get a hold of the rung. The what? The ladder rung. I didn't hear it ring. I... You talk, then. Go ahead, Costello. Climb up that ladder. Not me, brother. Look at those flames. Now, if that was Betty Grable in there, you wouldn't let her burn up. If Betty Grable wasn't there, I'd burn up. <laughs> Never mind. I'll go up first. You follow me. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh. The smoke up here is killing me. I, I can hardly breathe. My, my nose is shut up. Your nose is what? Shut up. Why should I shut up? I only ask you a simple question. <laughs> you dummy, I can hardly breathe. <clears throat> if I swallow any more smoke... How will I smell? I know the answer to that one, too. Uh, <laughs> now, here, I'll help you up the ladder. I- I'll grab you by the coat. Oh, oh, Abbott, you ripped my coat. What a picture I am. Uh, never mind. I- I'll grab you by the shirt. There goes my shirt. What a picture. Well, there's only one thing left. Picture censored. <laughs> All right, Costello, swing, swing over here towards me. I'll grab you by the bay window. You better not. I'm ticklish. Okay, there you are. There you are now to find Mrs. O'Leahy. <laughs> got here. Do you realize that one of my rumors, Kenneth Niles, is trapped in that flaming bedroom? Hey, Abbott, did you hear that? Come on, we got to get Niles out of there before he scorches his commercial. I <laughs> Quick, Costello. got to get Ken out of that room. Give me the axe. Oh, oh Costello, you idiot. You have to pop that door down. It's unlocked. I like to do it the hard way. <laughs> hey, here comes Niles, staggering out the door. Oh, water, water. Water, water. I must have water. Here, Niles, take a big drink. Oh, I don't want to drink it. My hair's dry and I can't do a thing with it. (laughs) Oh, would you idiots please do something? Look at that fire. It's burning my settee cover. Settee? 
tea cover. Too bad you haven't got a pair of my asbestos. Uh, 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 never mind that. Uh, hey. Look, the flames are getting higher. We've, we've got to get out of here. Come on. Come on, Mrs. O'Leary. I'll carry you out to safety. Mrs. O'Leary. Quit running around the table. This is no time to play hard to get. Quick, Castella. <laughs> Quick, Castella. She ran into that burning room after her. Nothing doing. You go after her. Uh, don't talk like a coward. Where's your manhood? My what? Call, call on your manhood. Okay. Manhood! Oh, manhood! No answer. Right. Wait a minute. Here, here she comes again, Castella. Grab her. I got her. I got her. Now, oh, get a chair for Mrs. O'Leary. Huh? She looks as if uh, she's going to faint. Look at her. She's going to faint. Watch out. Okay, I'll get a checker. Let her sit down. Here, here Mrs. O'A, recline your carcass on this bit of drunken fight. Oh, sit down. Oh, ah! Costello, I'll get you for this. What's the matter? What did I do? Costello, never put your fire helmet on a chair. Apologize to Mrs. O'A. <laughs> she should apologize to me. What for? She bet my eagle. I... <laughs> Costello will be back for cattle cigarettes in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the man who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the Fighting 69th Division, 1st Division to link up with the Russians in Germany. In your honor, men of the Fighting 69th Division, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> the two camel radio shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen next Thursday when Camel again presents Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud and Lou with the final word. Hey, Lou, hasn't this been a grand audience tonight? Yes, it has, Abbott. And to show our appreciation, let you and I go down into the audience to shake hands with everybody and let them see you and I face to face. No, no, not just anything for delegates. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, mister. What's the matter? You're a wise guy, don't you? Yeah, I'm pretty smart. Oh, yeah? I can stump you. You can? What's the difference between a Camel cigarette... A railroad engine and a lollipop. I don't know. What is the difference between a camel cigarette, a railroad engine, and a lollipop? The camel cigarette, you puff when you smoke. But a railroad, in- a railroad engine smokes when it puffs. What's the lollipop for? That's for suckers like you, ain't it? Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-Zone. See if you don't suit your taste, your approach to a tea. Are any of you pipe smokers breaking in a new pipe? Well, part of the secret is to smoke a slow-burning, bite-free, crimp-cut tobacco that quickly forms a good cake in the bowl. And that means Prince Albert. It burns slow and cool. Bite and sting are removed by Prince Albert's famous no-bite treatment. Yes, in brand new pipes and old pipes, Prince Albert ranks first with pipe smokers the world over. Try it. Learn why. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes. We'll be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.